Hi, creatives. It's Christine Booker from Bear My Soul Creations, and I am shining the BMSC spotlight on Tanya Hinton Green. Hi, Tanya. How are you? I'm fine. And yourself? I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here. We've been trying to connect for quite some time. It's so life be life in <laughs> life. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, um, tell us about yourself and tell us about your business. Well, again, my name is Tanya Hinton Green. I'm a mother, a wife, and a long-term uh, warrior or lupus fighter. Um, I've been battling it for 27 plus years. And I'm just at a point in my life where I needed to do something different. I started my business, Magical Whispers and Charming Wishes LLC, because of course we were in the pan pandemic mm -hmm. and it affected my family financially and it was unexpected. I'm pretty sure it, as it was for everyone or many of us. And I was actually looking for a side hustle to try to bring another stream of income in. Being disabled with a chronic illness um, isn't easy. Mm. And even though you don't look sick, Every morning you wake up, it's a different type of day. So it's hard to plan anything. Mm -hmm. But again, the whole idea was, you know, they tell you when you're trying to find a business idea to look for a problem and try to solve it. Yeah. And what I found, I took this really interesting course that the budget needs to put on. And the couple was talking about being financially secure and preparing for financial retirement. And one of the things or one of the topics was side hustles. And they gave us a bunch of ideas of things to start. Mm -hmm. And one of them was two fairy cards. And I'm kind of like two fairy cards. I never heard of that. So I started looking into it. And um, lo and behold, I found all this stuff about two fairy cards from the cards to um, little envelopes for the children to put their teeth in this oh. whole experience, mm -hmm. but not one of the children in the card were African-American or Brown or colored at all. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Are you telling me that nobody has this for these kids? I'm like, I know they know these children of all shades experience. Yes. The same. yes. So I started doing research and I couldn't find anything. And it was kind of disheartening at first mm -hmm. because I'm like, you know, I've had my struggles being, being a black woman, whether it's from school, growing up in an urban neighborhood, yes. you know, loss of life, the violence, all that we experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But our children are awesome. And yes, they are. It comes back to representation mm -hmm. and you hear it all the time. But if you're living in this skin, it doesn't hit you the same way as it hits other people. And I'm like, this is utterly ridiculous. So then I'm like, well, maybe I can create this stuff for our children. Mm -hmm. I said, as many different scenarios I had as my kids, I never, it never crossed my mind that these beautiful things out here could be done for them, whether it was a, a two fairy card, or writing a wish list to Santa, a black Santa. Right. I mean, all the milestones that help shape them mm -hmm. need to be highlighted. Yeah. So all of these things, I mean, every time I had an idea, I was in my phone. I love that. Things. That's that's a, then, sounds like an untapped niche right yes. there. Uh -huh. But certainly I didn't realize the iceberg I was chipping into. But yes, that's the whole basis for it all. It uh -huh. started off as trying to find a side hustle, coming across these two fairy cards, cards and being saddened. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any that looked like my kids mm -hmm. or looked like any of these kids in my neighborhood. So yeah. that's where it all started. I love your story. I love that. Talk to us a little bit more about your experience having chronic illness. Um, I know it's been hard for you uh, living with lupus. Can you tell us how that has helped to put an exclamation point on your why? Absolutely. 
So I started my career in life insurance. Okay. And of course, that opened up a whole new world for me because, you know, and I'm not going to say all, but in many Black households, you're not taught about finances, preparing for your future, estate planning, and all of those things. So it was an experience, to say the least. And I did really well in it. I started in customer service mm-hmm. um, and I became so involved in it and ambitious towards the whole idea. Any job I had after that, within a year, I worked extra hard just to get a, get a promotion, learn as much as I could because I just loved learning. So I went from life insurance to annuities. Then I went to... um all different fi- areas of finances for so like financial analytics, all of that. So in the middle of that, I decided to go back to school. Okay. Um, but be, let me back up a little. As I started my career in insurance, I was hit with the diagnosis at 22. So I was celebrating my 22nd birthday when at my birthday party, I just kind of fell off. Like my equilibrium was off. They rushed me to the hospital. And unlike so many people that I've encountered, my ER doctor diagnosed me with lupus. And so many people take years to get diagnosed, but he diagnosed me right there. I still didn't know anything about it. Nobody in my family ever heard anything about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was an invalid for almost eight months. I was isolated to a bedroom in the house. I couldn't eat anything, couldn't drink anything. The only thing that I could maintain was like Pedialyte. Mm -hmm. So it was crazy. But once I got back to working, I was like, I'm not going to let this illness define me. So I started climbing the corporate ladder. I went back to school. I got my degree in 2010. Okay. (laughs) And of course, the year that I graduate, my body decides to act up and it takes me out of work. (laughs) So that was crazy. And it took me a long time to accept. Because like I said, I was climbing the corporate ladder. I was doing everything I could, working extra hard, learning. Because I wanted, I had goals. I had ambitions. There was so much that I wanted to accomplish. And lupus took me out of it. And it, it that was a hard pile, pill to swallow. Um, And it's been 13 years of me trying Mm-hmm. trying to still get back because you know they have programs with social security to help you get back to work and we've tried it a number of times but it's like I don't know what it is but so working from home seemed to be the ideal thing for me yeah so again, that's why I started looking for the side hustle and um Yeah, it's been hard because even with taking on this whole entrepreneurial journey which I never thought would be my journey because I never thought I had the tolerance for that. I I was always a worker bee. Yes. It never crossed my mind <laughs> yeah. to want to own a business, especially now experiencing and taking into consideration the amount of work that you have to do, especially when you don't have a guide or mm-hmm. a mentor to help you. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's hard and especially when I feel like I'm making progress sometimes lupus says sit your little butt down Mm -hmm. don't get too uh cocky remember I'm here and it puts me down so that's another frustrating thing trying to get this business up and running and feeling like I'm making progress and sometimes maybe a day or so I have to take a beat because sometimes it gets that bad when I'm laid down for days. So that's another thing. And I don't really have, I'm I'm still early or new to this. So I don't really have the funds to hire somebody. You right. know, I'm still in the learning and planning phase, but I also need to be trying to make a return for all the money I am spending and throwing into the business. So it's a challenge to say the least. I, I think we all, um, I, we spend, we spend the money initially uh, when we're just building our businesses, but I commend you for even just working through the process and not giving up. So, so many people would have given up at this point. So I applaud you for doing that. 
So yeah, let's talk. It's crossed what? my mind. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're not giving up. You're not giving up. No, but up. when I think about the time and the money that I've invested, uh -huh. there's no way I uh -huh. could accept the decision to quit. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So what are your goals uh, that you've set for yourself in quarter four? Well, what I've set for myself is I recently opened up an Etsy store and okay. my goal is to get my digital and physical products out there um, to make, to get my business out there, to get myself well known. And it took me so long and coming because for so long, I was just trying to draw on what I was learning. But I'm like, girl, you spent the year taking classes, taking webinars. When mm -hmm. are you going to put something out? So finally, being in the creative community and seeing all of the creatives out there doing like, you have to do something. So I opened up my Etsy store last month in September and I've been working. I've been putting out prompt guides. I've been putting out digital Ooh. art. I've uh -huh. been commissioned to make generic greeting cards, which was the initial whole concept of my business in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what helped me get in alignment with my business, which I've heard be spoken to us so many times in this creative space is be in alignment. Mm -hmm. And I was so focused on the other things and taking the classes and I wasn't implementing anything I was learning. And that was because I'm starting to see that it wasn't in alignment with my whole idea from the get-go, which was to right. create the cards. And the other stuff can come later. Yeah. But it was the cards that gave me the whole idea in the first place. Well, so, I really like that because you, it seems, sounds like you're taking a step back instead yes. of just following the trend and doing what everyone is doing. You're trying to stay true to what your goal is. So, yeah. Yeah, I get yes. that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I had to do that because I was feeling overwhelmed. Like I said, there's so many creatives in this space and it's a warm and welcoming community. I mean, I've never felt so much love and support mm -hmm. and nobody's trying to be a gatekeeper. Right. There's a wealth of information and sharing. And I love the space. Don't get me wrong. But like you said, I was seeing what others was doing. Um, I was taking tips and classes and suggestions and I was putting stuff out there really with the motivation is I got to get some money. I got to get some revenue. I got to make a profit. And then when I didn't see it turning anything, it was it was overwhelming me, if not depressing me, that I wasn't seeing a return because I'm taking the steps. I'm doing everything I was told and it wasn't panning out. And that's why I had to sit back. Right. And um with the suggestion from one of our fellow creators, I'm just, I had to take a few days away and mm -hmm. I realized, get back to the core of what you wanted to do, which right. is create these cards to help these children learn to love the skin they're in, to see themselves in cards that celebrate them, that empower them, that right. are, are culturally appropriate, but most of all, it lets them see themselves and so many facets of life that they still to this day don't get to do. So how can someone contact you? How can we connect with you and uh, get some of these cards and some of your other works that you have? I do have a website. Um, it's Magical Whispers and Charming, which is LLC.com. And I actually just put some of my digital art on my website. I, I actually started, I don't know if I would say I started backwards, but <laughs> I had my website before I even had a product, but I was just going with what was told to me. So I finally have my website up with my art instead of, you know, the person that designed it, they found uh, stock photos and stuff like that, but it didn't feel like me, especially yeah. with learning mid journey and chat GPT, Dolly and all of that. I'm like, these images don't reflect what I'm doing. So I finally got in contact with GoDaddy. I put my art on the website and I've created seven journals um, that are on Lulu. Okay. okay. Um, and I have two journals on Barnes and Noble. So I'm actually, the downside to my site with GoDaddy is um, getting them to connect 
me with like the Lulu and um, even Etsy because they couldn't connect my Etsy store to my site, which I don't, I really have to look into. But yes, I have my website on Etsy, I'm Magical WCW LLC. So that's my handle on Etsy. Yes, I have d- journals for young children and teens. I have the digital art. And right now I'm making Christmas cards. Oh, that's um, wonderful. With black images from Perfect. you know gospel choirs or black angels, all dif- different kind of themed Christmas cards um, that people can personalize. So my website, Etsy and Printify and Lulu is where I'm at now. Okay. I, have you thought about using a, a link tree? Yes. I just heard about link tree, but somebody also uh, told me about bit.ly. So I'm, I just uh, created a bit.ly profile and um, Hatsune from the creative black girl told me I took her flow desk class, but I had previously signed up for MailChimp and I did a one-on-one with her okay. and she helped me get my first campaign out there for gathering my email list so for new okay. subscribers so I'm getting there okay. <laughs> like I said okay. it's kind of backwards you no. know I'm getting there I'm getting there I, I actually <laughs> I, I like my link tree uh site better than I like uh, my actual website but I've linked really everything my Amazon my Lulu my um, Printify, everything is, my social media is all in my link tree. So that might be something you may want to consider as well. And Maybe you can, I'll do that instead of the Bitly. And you can put, well, Bitly is going to help you shorten your um, your website, your URLs. Mm-hmm. That's going to help. Um, but you certainly, if you need help with that, let me know and I can I can show you how I got mine set up. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll definitely look into that. So how can we connect with you? You just gave us all of your website information. Is there an email? Did you give that to us as well? Well, for my website, um, Mm -hmm. it's support at Magical Whispers and Charming Wishes, LLC.com. Okay, okay. And I'm also, um, because they also said it's important through different mentors, they say it's important to have a quote unquote business email so yes. that's my business email and outside of the Gmail accounts. But I'm also at magicalwhispercw at gmail.com. So I have both of those emails set up to get my business out there for support and follow up. Because customer service, because I come from a customer service background, customer service is very important to me. So yeah. even with my Etsy, I have my notifications on auto. So if someone reaches out to me and they need help, or they have questions, I get a notification and I can respond pretty quickly. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for doing this BMSC Spotlight. All, if you want to join the Bearing My Soul Creatives private Facebook group for creative Black women, please join us. Please link up with us. There are women like Tanya on that site, and we're all business women. We're all creatives, and we're all supporting one another. So link up with us. Tanya, thank you for this interview, and you have a blessed day. Thank you so much for having me. You have a wonderful day as well. Thanks, Christine. Bye. Bye.